Yes, and I'm one of your hosts today, along with my two other hosts, co-founders and comadres, Chantal Camarillo and Vanessa Montañez. Chantal, Vanessa, and I happen to be in the mortgage industry for several decades, and together we decided to create Lead Her Talks. This journey came about in the midst of the pandemic. We wanted to start an open forum for women and those supporting women where we can empower, enrich, and educate others on relevant topics, which hold meaning. Today, the topic is Lead Her Talks Challenge 2021 update and our takeaways. Our Lead Her Talks Challenge for 2021 was really founded around three pillars for Lead Her Talks, which are to educate, empower, and enrich. Each one of the pillars focuses on several areas where we can further grow, develop, and build not only ourselves, each other, but all lead hers. The education pillar focuses on personal development, knowledge, which created our Lead Her Talks book club, and will have its first live episode, ladies and gentlemen, on February 25th at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. We will have our author live with us, and friend who is a friend to Vanessa Montañez and mentor, Dr. Louis P. Frankel with her book, Nice Girls Still Don't Get That Corner Office, which I just happened to have finished reading yesterday. It is amazing. The Empower Pillar focuses on confidence, influence, and validation. We committed to walk more and exercise uh, and healthy habits. So together we're holding each other accountable in that particular pillar. The Enrich Pillar focuses on improving and, and enhancing and prospering our lives. Out of this pillar, we all committed to focus on the following categories, or one of them, mind, body, soul, and home care, which includes our relationships at home with our family and loved ones, partner, or spouse, or maintenance around the home. That is also really important because home is where the heart is, and or also prosperity, career, business, and wealth. Our initial kickoff call or episode, which launched Lead Her Talks Challenges for 2021, we all made a commitment. And so we de are dedicating this episode to check in with each other and all of you on the progress that we are making with our resolutions or our Lead Her Talks Challenge for 2021. So with that being said, I'm gonna put the limelight on my friend, Chantal, Tell us a little bit, Chantal, what has been a positive lift in the one and a half months of 2021 because of the challenge? Well, thank you for picking on me. Um, I will start on a high note and then end on a low note. So Leader Talks, let me just let you all know. Um, I'll start with the educational pillar. So pretty exciting because as you all recall, I shared on my vision board that I wanted to pursue higher education and I um, was still pending wrapping up my bachelor's degree. So believe it or not, I actually enrolled, made this reality. Um, so I start uh, spring, basically uh, March 29th, my first, my first courses. And so I'm super thrilled. I think I really, um, taking in consideration everything that we're experiencing and just the virtual environment, I'm like, why not? And for a lot of our leaders out there that are probably on the fence or have had the same situation where the best gets of you, the, your careers, your family, um, it's never too late, you know? So um, I'm very thrilled about that. And then the second portion of the educational pillar is reading the actual book. It's been just awesome. And I will say that um, for many of you guys that may have started the book, I have not finished. Okay, so kudos to, to my girl Rosario there. But for those that started the book, you may recall you had a self-assessment, right? And so the reality is I knew it was a little different. It tells you, you know, start with where you score the lowest as a way to jump ahead throughout the book, right? And that was really interesting. And so um, I've already gone through the how you think and how you act and also how you play the game. And so um, those were the first three of the low scores that I um, received with my self-assessment. But it's funny, it was under the fine tuning is the name of your game. So here I am, ladies, definitely fine tuning, cannot wait for the February the 25th event. 
um, that we will definitely have Dr. Lois Frankel here with us. So that's a great honor. So can't wait for that to um, take place very soon. And in terms of the Empower, uh, okay, the workout hasn't been really <laughs> going the way I planned, but you know, I'll throw in a walk here and there. I did lose weight, I will say about five, five pounds or so. Um, needless to say, the drinking of the water has helped tremendously. I can't complain in terms of my complex, right, my complexion and stuff like that. Um, so with that, that's kind of, you know, where I'm at with the Empower, but definitely making it a point to to take those still those baby walks, you guys, in the sense that you don't have to, you know, all of a sudden start working out like a maniac and get the Peloton and, you know, all this expense. No, just take those little baby steps. And so that's definitely what I'm doing. Um, in terms of the Enrich Pillar, so um, I mentioned that I was going to commit to, you know, looking at all of my, um, my, my exams, like if I had any medical checkups and things like that. Well, believe it or not, that's a little difficult to come by given the environment we're in. And so I did try to just ensure that I would schedule my checkups and um, that that wasn't a reality. It was like, nope, sorry, given today's environment, um, you know, we will basically uh, open up, I guess, those registration or appointments. Um, so that's, that's a no-go there, right? Because that was something I was committed to ensuring that I was on top of all of my wellness checkups. Um, so, you know, I put a pause on that simply because of the environment we're in. But my girl Rosario here, <laughs> she actually um, hooked us up with with this um, Instagram, uh, you know, guru when it comes to just enrichment. What I mean is like the wellness for your face, for your upkeep, looking good, feeling good. She is a character. Um, her name is Sonia Valencia on Instagram. And I will tell you, it's been a riot just to follow her, just to listen to her, mm -hmm. um, to take her little tips. And so share. I will say, I'm very thankful, Rosario. Thank you for sharing that little tidbit, um, sharing her. Um, I've shared it with my closest friends and we are just like busting up. But at the same token, she gives a lot of great tips for skincare and ensuring that you take care of yourself. And some of the basic stuff is like sunscreen and whatnot. But she actually does recommend some really inexpensive facial creams and things of that nature that she basically will show before and after pictures and all through a really amazing lens. What kind of lens? The lens to make us laugh at one another, you know? And so I enjoy watching her Instagram. My mom enjoys watching it now. So thank you very much, Rosario, for that. So that's kind of my my update when it comes to that. So Vanessa, hermanita. Where are you in your journey, girlfriend? <laughs> uh, similar to you, Chantal, I have my highs and a little bit of lows as well, only because uh, we're getting on going into March. And so, you know, we're all gung ho at the beginning of the year. So I will say for my Empower, I am walking daily. And it's been awesome because I take a rest like towards the end of my day, normally from four to five or three to four, whenever I have half an hour to an hour break in between my day, I try to go out there before the sun sets. And it's been wonderful because it gives me again back that energy. And in my neighborhood, I normally walk about a mile and a half to two miles daily. And then on the weekend time, I get to walk with one of my dear friends and we go to different trails um, in Pasadena. And we do about three to three and a half miles but what's great is that I have my accountability partner with me, Miss Wendy, and we just get to talk about what happened during the week and we, we're in nature and it's just a great way to be accountable with your girls. Uh, so for those out there, I definitely say, have your walking buddy to keep you more accountable and a great phone charge so you could do um, some of your walks. So like if you have to do callbacks, that's a great time to do your callbacks when you're actually taking your walk or listen to your podcast. So my walking has been one of my highlights and I'm enjoying it because I love walking. I'm not a runner. <laughs> so this is just a really great time to do it. Um, also, by the walking and drinking more water and just really trying to limit my wine intake to the weekend, what's great is I'm down seven pounds. God knows I have a journey to go, but it's those baby steps that's been working on the walking. So the walking has definitely impacted me. Drinking a lot more seltzer water is fantastic. Uh, so that's been my really great uh, 
empowerment pillar. So that's my great news there. And then on my educate, well, I do read daily and I am reading uh, the book by Dr. Lois Frankel, Nice Girls Still Get the Corner Office. And when I did my assessment, it came out at a, at a higher score. So it says, you go girl. But what I love about this book, it's because it's so relevant to today and to any woman or anyone who is in a business setting, self-employed, Sometimes you just need those tools to, you know, to revive yourself or to get back um, to saying, you know what, I have a voice and I want a seat at the table. So I think it's been really enriching and empowering all of us, uh, just similar to Lean In by Cheryl Zambert. So this is a great read and this was before Lean In. So I really uh, look up to Dr. Frankel. She's a wonderful mentor and a coach for all of us going through the same journey. So it's been wonderful there. So that was on a positive. For my Rich, I did um, do a lot of the body and the soul and the mind. And thankfully I did do most of my um, health screens. I didn't have the same uh, situation as Chantal. Different insurance carriers have different priorities and different regulations as COVID. Um, so that's interesting. It makes you wanna analyze what one insurance will do as a compared to another. But that's a whole nother topic because of that, that irritates me. I'm like, how is it that one carrier will do it with the pandemic and the other will not? What is that about? That's another topic. <laughs> okay, but on a good note, um, I'm doing well at work and I was awarded the Legends uh, Possible, which is like the President's Club for US Bank. So I'm really happy that I was awarded um, the only award these to a select number of employees. So um, I'm jazzed that I get to work at a great company with great leadership and an awesome manager. So those are my updates. Um, so good, good stuff. But what I want to do is talk a little bit, Rosario. So where are you on your journey? And I'm so glad that you kept your goal and you finished the book faster than me and Chantel. And how do you feel? I am feeling back to our pillars, I'm feeling empowered, enriched, and educated, definitely. Um, the book has been probably one of the biggest takeaways for me because uh, I will own it. I love books, but I love to listen to books, not quite read. And what I did, and you guys, I've shared with a lot of you before and a lot of my close friends, is I like to read, but be read to. And what I really did is <clears throat> decided to get my uh, audio book and the actual book. Here we go. And, <clears throat> and I write in it and whatnot. So I really took it a step further than to just really using the auditory piece of it. And I've had so many takeaways. So with that being said, reading that book and listening to it really empowered me. I've been able to really understand a little bit more about myself as a leader, as a friend, as a mother, as a wife, and really take taken some risks in such a short period of time, which is just a month and a half, um, really have felt that sense of empowerment. So for instance, at work, I am taking that leap and saying, hey, you know, I see a gap here in the um, ERG or employee resource group, reached out to a couple of colleagues and said, we're going to start the Latino or Latina, you know, resource group for the company for Caliber Home Loans. So I am proud to say I volunteered, but really um, I took the lead on it to say this is something we need and we're going to do it and help empower others within our company. So I'm really That's excited good. about that. Exactly. Um, thank you. You and raise um, that hand, girl. You have to raise a hand. Right. So I will encourage all of you that sometimes we're looking at it as my mother used to say, el que mucho abarca, poco aprieta. But at the same time, it's sometimes we have to do a little bit more to really make that impact. It's not necessarily about, oh, I'm going to get ahead, but what value am I going to bring to the company I work for? And what example am I going to set for my children? And what example am I going to set for all of you that are watching us here at Leader Talks, right? So it's something that was that I had to dig in deep, but reading that book really empowered me to raise my hand. So I hope you guys do the same. And um, obviously the education piece, I'm learning more, um, not only uh, just about business, but about myself. And on the enrichment side, <clears throat> so 
it's all about, uh, I introduced Chantal to Sonia Valencia, who is a character right on. Uh, <laughs> but I also discovered Sonia Valencia earlier, right in, in 2021. And so I started following her and I absolutely love skincare and all that, you know, stuff, Botox and creams and, you know, I, yeah, I, I follow it. I love it. If you can go for it, do it. If what, whatever makes anybody feel confident, I'm all about that. But what I really absolutely love Sonia Valencia is because she knows her stuff and keeps it real and keeps it affordable where we can all really, you know, go out to Target, Walmart, uh, and order our, our things and, and buy them and, and follow a regimen and feel really good about ourselves. So kudos to that amazing lead her, Sonia Valencia, for um, being amazing and sharing what she knows and her knowledge because I feel great with, with my skin at my age. And so it's awesome. So I'm happy, um, happy about that. On the other flip side is we talked about um, also the weight loss and kind of making the right choices healthy wise, you know, in terms of exercise and food. So food, I'm doing great exercise. I'm with one of the girls, not so great. I know Vanessa has been really <laughs> religious about doing her walks because sometimes I'm making a call at three o'clock and it's like all this kind of noise in the background. She's like, oh, I'm on my walk. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's like, okay, Vanessa, I'm really jealous right now because for me, um, early morning walks, uh, early on at the beginning of the year, I was hitting it out of the park. I shared with all of you, I had a slight setback about two to three weeks into the year that I had to, for medical reasons, had to like take a, a you know, quick pause. And I knew it, it was gonna be harder for me to get back on the path of you know on my routine that i had you know quickly developed a routine routine but it is what it is i'm not perfect and i will try my best and the girls are going to help me and my you know my support group so with that being said that's where pretty much i am but we did want to share um one of the biggest things with lead her talks and lead her talks challenge we talked a little bit about vision boards we had a couple of episodes around vision boards and it's basically it became a mini series out of lead her talks we had um an author and we had a, a great lead her also share what she does every year but one of the things that i will walk away just in a month and a half and in 20 almost 20 episodes we've been doing lead her talks is the impact and we had one of our viewers great friend of mine which i actually happen to have uh, grown up with and she shared with me um, what the episodes around vision boards did for her and her family. And it was really touching. I shared with the girls and I asked her permission. Her name is Cristina Torres. And she shared with me, I will share the pictures. And as you can see, this is uh, her niece and her nephew and her other niece and they each created their vision board. And so when we talk about the challenge update and whether we're doing the right thing or are we really on point or, or you know, what setbacks did we have? It has been really inspiring for myself and I'm sure for Chantel and Vanessa to see Hello. this impact that uh, it has made for these amazing future lead hers. Um, and I mean, it just has really been touching I know I know them personally because I did grow up with Christina, but whether I did grow up with her or not, I just love it. That she shared that with me, that she was vulnerable to do that with me. And um, our, own vulnerab our own vulnerability, right? <laughs> it's such a hard word for me to say. But um, for us to do that with all of you um, and putting ourselves out there is part of the learning process. And for those of you who have not read, nice girls still don't get the corner office that is something you, you will take away from that that sometimes we have to do that to continue to impact each other and help all of us level up so um i love this uh that this was shared um with us this is lika she's 18 years old and it was her vision board and we're really excited um i shared with christina that you know go get them 
the world's your oyster. You know, it's, you can accomplish so much. She wants to start her own business. And, you know, at 18 years old to have that and that want and desire, um, you go get them, Lique. You know, make it happen. We're, we're all behind you. Absolutely. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. And it was nice when you, you shared your mom's voice. So for me, and I'm, I'm, I'm certain my sister, we have our father's voice and mom, but my dad, one of his saying in Spanish is, querer es poder, wanting is getting. So to me, it's always his voice sometimes that I hear with some of my journey, some of my goals and my wants. It's him and my voice that I hear when I'm like looking at this. However, we all know not everything is, you know, uh, rainbows, not everything is perfect. And so what I want to do is go around the horn with you ladies. And I know our challenges sometimes we're not always 100% engaged. We're not where we want to be. So what are you doing to maintain your challenge when you're not always successful? And oh my God, I went off the wagon or I didn't walk. Um, Chantal, what are you doing to stay focused? And what happens if you, you forget and you didn't do your goal? Wow. So first things first, I, I don't want to be too tough on myself because God knows I am juggling with a lot on top of wearing many hats, um, working full time, being a mom, um, a teacher, right? Um, there's so many things. And unpaid. so, right? Unpaid, exactly. But needless to say, um, it, it's just, again, not being too hard on yourself. Um, know that you can um, pick yourself up and do it again. Right. And I would say the other thing is having these two amazing <laughs> leaders, my dear friends that every week we check in, we get together. So they're technically my accountability partners, believe it or not. And so they know very much <laughs> as we all share whether or not we are progressing where we need to go. Um, but again, like I said, it's those baby steps. Don't be too, too critical on yourself, um, you know. Sometimes life happens. And so that, that's how I would basically, you know, frame that. How about you, Rosario? So for me, obviously, I shared a little bit about, obviously, um, the walking. I was really killing it. I mean, I was so <laughs> proud. I remember, like, texting you guys, like, the first two weeks. Hey, I just walked four miles in an hour and 15 minutes or whatever crazy time I was hitting. But... Um, definitely getting back in baby steps, you know, and obviously, you know, the, the reality of it and, um, sharing, we all just have that little setback and getting back on, even if it's five minutes, I will do that. I promise. Um, and then the other thing that's been really impactful for me is, you know, being in the mortgage industry, 2020 was extremely busy. I did pretty good in keeping in touch and, and, you know, um, the, finger on the pulse in terms of my friends, family, colleagues, um, network, staying in touch. Um, towards the tail end, I think it got really slammed busy and I kind of have not done genuinely what I like to do. And so I wanna, I, I, I really wanna continue to focus on that a little bit more um, in touch points with my family, my nieces, my nephews who are now getting a little bit older, getting their own cell phones. I'm enjoying, you know, uh, sending them like little messages and stuff. Um, so things like that, that are really meaningful to me. Um, I want to do a better job at. Yeah. What about you, Vanessa? So that's a great way uh, to think about it. We went through a pandemic. We're still in a pandemic and it's okay to fail. I think this was the biggest reality check for a human, for the globe, for the world, for all of us to say, it's okay to fail. It's okay not to be perfect. Sometimes we have to, you know, take two steps back to take one step forward and it's okay. Um, so to me, it was a reality check to stop, smell the roses a lot more than I'm normally. It's not always go, go, go. Yes, it's great to be organized and great to be, have your, your goals and your, but also it's your tribe, it's your family, it's your friends that are gonna get through it, help you get through it. So um, let's say I went down seven pounds and up two pounds. Oh, well, the journey is still there. Life is a journey. It's never gonna stop um, until God knows when. 
But for me, it's okay to fail because I know that I'm going to be then one day uh, failing forward and having a success one day. It doesn't have to be tomorrow, but I'm just grateful that we have this opportunity to share and continue to grow and thrive because not many of us did have that opportunity with this pandemic. And so to me, it's okay to fail. We're going to fail forward, but we're together. And I think the most important is to hold those that you love close to you um, and you know, just treasure these moments and it's okay to fail. So to me, it's okay. That's the word. <laughs> um, so with that, I think I'm gonna pass it back to you, Chantal, for you to close yes. this up. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for sharing that. And, um, you know, for all you leaders out there, we wanna hear from you. Make sure to like us, um, share our posts, invite other leaders to the forum. We definitely wanna grow and we need your support on making that a reality. And just a friendly reminder for our February 25th live event for our book club, our first book club of the year uh, with Dr. Lois Frankel. Please note it is between 4.30 and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, okay? So please do log in um, at least 10 minutes before or whatnot, just, you yeah. know, to avoid any technical difficulties or whatnot. But we promise also for next week leader talks, it's one that you don't wanna miss. We will continue to discuss the Black History Month with our guest speaker and award-winning Hall of Fame, Ms. Catherine Willis and her successful son and leader, Scott Willis. This will be a special segment featuring mother and son to celebrate family, education, and love. Do not forget to like us again, share our feeds with other leaders and invite again for them to join our forum. We're all about enriching educating and empowering more women and each other and so with that we want to say thank you stay tuned for next week episode and bye